My thought for the day is a heart-to-heart -heart hug. I went self-employed in the 1990s and I went into the business world and the non-profit world to help people to live, laugh, love and learn. And I remember being told, forget the love. You can't take love into the business world. <laughs> and I said, well, of course we can. It's what is most needed. And that connection to people, heart to heart, is so important. So I would invite people to stand up and only if they were comfortable to give and receive a hug. And I would say to them that you might like to receive a hug off one person and not off another. And it's okay to say no. It's an interesting place to be because as the coronavirus is spreading throughout Europe and the rest of the world, we are being encouraged to keep our distance. And that's important. And yet we crave physical contact. I had the great fortune to head down to Torquay to see my mum and dad before the outbreak happened here in the UK. My mother was scheduled to have a foot operation in early February and it got cancelled. And then it was set for March. And so two days prior to me going down, she was going in to have her operation. She was ready to go into the theatre. She had her gown on, they had drawn on her leg, and then they found out that she was on a blood thinner and that she couldn't have the operation because she'd bleed out. And she was devastated. The great news was I was still going down, no longer to support her through the operation, rather to support her in life. My dad had a second heart attack last year and he is in recovery and yet he gets shortness of breath. They're both in their 80s and I was looking at a photo today of them that's on my vision board and one of the things that I had decided to do and continue doing this year was to record their life stories. I started it a couple of years ago and it, it really lifts their spirits. And what's beautiful is I have them on audio and video sharing how they fell in love, about their childhood memories, about the work that they've done in the world and what they're proud on, proud of them and, and, and what's happened where they've fallen down and scraped their knees and got up and faced life again. They have wept during the stories. They have laughed during the stories. And I know when they're no longer on the planet, I will revisit this, this footage again and again and again. I'm told that one thing that will happen is you will forget the sound of someone's voice. So having the sound of my mum and dad's voice recorded with the emotion of their stories is such a great gift. Well, I was down in Torquay as things started heating up here in the UK and social distancing was starting to come into effect. It hadn't fully gripped us by then. And I remember sitting in my parents' front room and I was heading out the following day and my dad said to me, they're saying that we shouldn't hug anymore. And I said, well, they're right, dad. I probably shouldn't even be sitting in your front room. I, 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 I am though, and if you would rather I wasn't here, I'll go now. And when I come to leave tomorrow, I fully respect if you don't want to hug off me. I said, and I always have a hug for you. And my mum said, I'm having my hug. Now, I understand everybody has to make their choice of what's right for them. 
And my mother in that moment said, my choice is to hug you. Because we don't know. We're sitting and intending that we will see each other again. Well, we don't know whether we'll see each other again. I mean, that's the case whenever you leave somebody. There's no guarantees in life. And yet, this virus has brought everything right into our face. Well, what I did get to do, which was such a gift, was I sat down with my parents and I, I've shared it in pieces before. And I said, look, I have something that I want to say. And I got to say to them in person how special they are, how important they have been to me in my life the greatness of who they are, of how they've shaped me, how they have given me the courage to fly into the world and to follow my dreams. It's a great gift to offer people we love and say, you're beautiful, you've shaped me, you've changed me. For years I have I've, I've invited people to write letters to somebody saying, thank you for making a difference in my life. You know, we get texts, we get emails, but there's something special about receiving a letter. And whilst the postal service is still in operation, and even after, if, if, if it is suspended, it's a great thing to do to take pen to paper and write down some thoughts and say, thank you. You have impacted my life. I mean, imagine receiving a letter on your doorstep today and you open it up. I'm just getting a letter <laughs> and it's not a bill. <laughs> and you take that in when someone says, thank you for making a difference in my life. I've written many such letters in my lifetime and it wasn't in writing with my parents it was orally and it was in their home and you might not be with your loved ones right now but with technology as it is with Skype, FaceTime, other mediums that are out there it's a great opportunity to let people know how much you love them how much you care. In great gratitude, I share on this day.